Welcome to the Fitness Business Secrets Podcast. We've got an absolute bumper episode for you guys today. What we're going to be covering is looking over your daily sales meetings and refining your processes. Pages being shut down, which is happening across the board. Hey, Brad, it's pretty, pretty nuts, is. isn't it? It uh, certainly is. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about a couple of ways you can overcome that. One of our clients named Oscar is an absolute legend. He's about to hit 150 active members. We talk about managing fatigue levels. Um, Brad's got an amazing Chloe client named Joey. How many sales does Joey close, mate? Uh, we've got 50 people inside of his six-week challenge. Um, it's been running for five weeks. That's on another level. And then now uh, we're going to chat about a few upcoming events. But Brad, mate, what's been the highlight of today? Mate, we've, uh, we're actually doing some, some internal training inside of our team at the moment in regards to sales and systems and something that as you know, people that have been listening know is right in my wheelhouse, but I suppose just really diving deep into sales. And for me, constantly being that student, just getting deeper into things that I've been, I suppose, aware of, but not practicing as such, because we haven't had to, but as our team's developing, really mm. diving in deeper and understanding more in the field of sales has sort of been the big thing for me the last couple of days. Yeah, I think the the big thing for us at the moment is um, so very blessed uh, that we're on track to do three million a year in annual revenue. So hats off to Brad for being the absolute Trojan horse that you are. But you're going on holidays next year, you you dirty devil. Where are you <laughs> off to? I was filthy when you told well, me. <laughs> well, you told me you were going to Europe for a couple of weeks and I got a bit of FOMO and we were actually supposed yeah. to go to Europe before COVID. Um, and it didn't, it didn't eventuate. So we decided we're going to head over to Europe next year, um, just before my daughter turns two, because she can travel for free until you're yeah. two. So we're going to um, take advantage of that, head over to Italy for three weeks. And thus, we cannot have no sales for three weeks. We'll both have, I'd have a heart attack. When I'd be so embarrassed if my business didn't close three sales. I well, couldn't look the, at myself in the mirror and shit. <laughs> and this is the thing, right? Like people, and we, we speak about it quite often, you know, making sure that you're planning for when you're going on holidays and having a business when you're going on holidays. But this just goes to show like when you have people that are key position players in your business, it's not a four-week period to get set up for someone to go on leave so you know, we're literally booking holidays for next September and, and it's like November now and we're, we're starting to plan and put things in place and forecast what needs to happen for a successful transition to happen before I go away so yep. there's no hiccups. Yeah, so we, you know, all, we have to um, get all of our systems in one area so it's easily accessible, hire, tra hire staff, train staff, no doubt, probably fire a few along the way, <laughs> behead a couple. <laughs> and uh, mate, for the fitness professionals watching, um, it's a really big task, like systemizing your sales processes and things like that. Um, you know, a couple of things that that you guys did really well. You had very refined sales systems in your um, fitness business. For those who have like never thought about systemizing their sales processes, um, where would be like a couple of good places to start? And it's it sounds so basic when when I go through this. I'm actually doing a presentation at um, our elite event in Melbourne um, on the weekend about this exact topic. And it simply starts by writing down exactly what you do currently. Yeah, because a lot of people want to build out a system and they want it to be amazing. And a lot of the times they can overlook the basics that they're doing currently that are really setting them up for success. So I always start with just note down what you're doing currently and what systems you have in place. And from there, you can start to refine it. Yeah. And that's um one of the issues that we had when um my business partners and I were doing sales before we had a team, everyone were growing and everything was going pretty good, but we all did it like slightly differently. Um, so one of the things we had to do when we build it into sales systems is have a set flow. So, you know, step one, we get the lead. Step two, they do a, a 15 minute triage call. Step three, they book their appointment. Step four, we get the consult to attend. Step five, we run the consult and just really map it out. And that was like our exact flow. It was very, very simple. Um, so that then you know what the actual sales processes look like. And then you can align all the training materials and resources around it. Um, and then in time, once you've been tracking it for a little bit, you can add KPI and tracking data. 
we generally didn't put KPIs on ourselves for the first four weeks because we've got to see what's the lay of the land, how many consultations are we actually getting booked before we set a goal of, you know, getting 15 consults a week. So we kind of just let things roll for a month and then we set, you know, pretty hard and strict KPIs. Yeah. And and what I've sort of seen you know, over the last couple of years, you know, with chatting with business owners is when they're the person doing everything, they they have the freedom because they're the business owner. So if a lead calls them up and cold calls them, one day they might book them in for a consultation in club. The next day they might try, try and sell them over the phone. The next day they might do something different where once you actually start delegating it to a team, you don't want all of these different options. You want to have one system so you yeah. can get a predictable outcome. So it's really just thinking, hey, which way do we want to go? What system do we want to follow so the team can learn the way to do it? Yeah. And then you've really got to back your system for better or worse. And then, you know, say if we, the system that that Brad builds out for our sales flow, he will back that. So if everyone follows the sales system and it doesn't work, Brad will take ownership of that. But then if the team isn't following the system, then you'll still take ownership of it. But thus it's like follow the bloody system. And that happens so much, especially with a lot of the fitness business owners um, we work with. I was having a chat to a guy today um, and we're talking about an operations checklist for his business. And then I kind of showed him ours and he's like, oh, I did that two years ago. And I'm like, well, what, why aren't you using it? And he goes, I know. And that's that, that triangle. Have you ever read the book, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber? I have not. Read that. So there's like, um, so technician, which would be being a personal trainer, then a manager, which would be like a PT manager, and then a a, a visionary. So I've never reached visionary. Um, I actually don't know many people who truly have. They kind of do hybrid roles. But what a lot of people um, do is they set up all these amazing systems and there's no one to manage them that they're actually getting done. Um, it's a bit like I, I did a post the other day of um, of the bathrooms. Did you see that? Of like all I did the see that, yeah. And, and the funny thing is, is in that bathroom, I, I'll get a photo of it, is there's a cleaning checklist that people tick off and it's just like dust on it and everything like that. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> so it's like, hey, you follow the system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, this is, and this is the thing, right? It's like when, when you have a system, it gives you a predictable outcome and needs to be followed, but it needs to be followed. You know, it's, mm. it's like, you know, writing someone the perfect program, the perfect weight training program. It, it may be the most advanced program in the world, but if they can't stay compliant to it, it's not going to get done result. So it doesn't matter how fancy it is. And this is why quite often with sim with systems, it's what's the simplest way possible to do something. And, you know, I'm not a lazy person by any stretch of the imagination, but sometimes having a lazy mindset around things just makes you want to not complicate it. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. The What's that, that old quote? Um, simple scales, fancy fails, right? Yeah. It's like you hear it hundreds of times a year and, um, it's so true, especially I work obviously with a lot of people in marketing and they make their marketing so complex. It's like I saw a presentation the other day of someone planning, trying to plan a gym's marketing. And it was like a 21 day offer, then a 28 day offer, and then a six week offer starting on January 4, and then a 21 day offer, and then another six week. I'm just like, yeah, good luck running the ads for that, unless you have like a full time ads manager, someone like on it. Imagine just communicating that to your team, you know, yeah. offer to. Like in, in, a, in any big business, when you change an offer, you can't just change it like that. You know, it's like as seven people, you got to tell that, you know, the offers being changed and the sales processes, let alone the onboarding systems, it's just chaotic. And also the, the systems for the sales team, right? Like we, we speak about it quite often, Jimmy. We went from, um, you know, no free offer, essentially people join the inner circle directly. And then now we're running a, a free 14 days. But yeah. if we were to change back, it would be very hard. It'll take us probably a month or so because people have been seeing 14 days free for such a period of time that there needs to do that line in the sense like, okay, now this is the new messaging, but the sales team need to be aware there's going to be some overlap still of people coming in from different offers. And if you have an advanced sales team, they can probably adapt. But most people inside facilities, again, they want to sell one program. Let the marketing change, but let the the, the fulfillment system that you have that gets clients the amazing results stay the same. Yeah, and with your marketing, you just put a, you know, give it a little haircut, 28-day challenge to 28-day transformation challenge to fitter in 28 days. Give it a um, new wrapper. Give it a new wrapper. Yeah, it's a better term, hey. Um, rather than um, 
like a just ju- adjusting offers. That's chaotic, man. Yeah, chaotic. that's it. That's it. And we're speaking about obviously ads and things, and a big, a big topic at the moment, you know, is obviously ad accounts being shut down, Jimmy. And we're seeing people F45 being forty fives just getting smoked, eh? F forty fives. We're saying at the moment. Google because someone, someone, uh, I did a post about F forty five. Did you see that? I did. And I was like. Don't say you're better than F45 unless you charge more, which I fundamentally believe. I was, I was on a call with someone and they were slagging on F45. And I love F45. My cousin actually um, owns one. I think it's really good workout. Not for me. I love like lifting weights, um, but the workouts are fun. They're tough. There's a big market for it. But I was on a call with someone and they were, they were just slagging F45. And I'm like, well, I think they're doing a couple of things right, potentially as a car. I'm not, not sure. I could be crazy. But like being in top 10 fitness companies in the world, I feel like they got one or two things dialed in. Um, but they were slagging on them. I'm like, well, why are you charging 30 a week and your local one's charging 60 if you're so much better? Like where's what's the what's the gap in there and stuff? Um, but anyways, if you Google F45, it's like I think Greg Norman's suing him. Is that right? Um, yeah, there's a heap of stuff happening, right? Yeah, my cousin told me it last he's like, because he owns an F45. Let's have let's have a look. Let's share the screen. The thing is, I think again is like ad accounts being shut down is the biggest thing, right? Where where people are essentially, I suppose they're so focused on having one avenue of marketing that because their ad accounts are shut down for for whatever reason, that they're really Mm. struggling to generate leads. Yeah. See, look at this. So in excess of a hundred something, something class action suit. Founder Adam Gilchrist selling his home for 11 mil. He's clearing some assets by the looks, but he's probably loaded anyways. And then Greg Norman and David Beckham to sue F45 for 20 million. So it's kind of crazy with F45. They had such good press and now they're just getting punished, bro. <laughs> it's yeah, and I think and I think the biggest thing is, you know, for the for the owners that we work with and the ones that may be listening to this is like you need to, I suppose, really double down now and not let the noise affect you. It's very yeah. easy to get caught up in the noise. And a lot of these things we can't control. They're, they're outside of our sphere of control. We need to focus on what we can focus on. And, and that's going to be, you know, generating good leads, signing people up to your program and looking after the clients that you have. Yeah, and, and when pages got shut down, we actually we actually didn't have a page shut down. Um, but you know Andrew Gosen, you know, Gosen yeah. from systems by design so one of his tactics that he taught me was he they would run the same ads from different pages and they would get different lead costs even though it was the same ad account um so anyways i was just having lunch with him one day and i was just complaining about my high lead cost living below the line complaining about the high lead cost anyways he's like set up a new page so we had like our main business page and we set up a page i think it was called like northern beaches health and fitness or body transformations um, and so we're running ads from two pages at the one time, just being as greedy as possible to get as many leads as we can. Um, but it works. Like it took like literally 10 minutes to set up. We put a couple of transformations and we're running ads and just bypassed it. So, you know, we're about to talk about omni-channel marketing, but if your ad page gets shut down or you can't advertise, just work around it. Get someone else to make a page, add you as an admin and just get it cooking. Yeah. And I think the other thing is, you know, a lot of people, they they're not aware of these issues until they happen. Right, like that they hear of other people getting their ad accounts shut down. It's all good. It hasn't happened to me, and then it happens to them, and they're like, "Holy shit! What do I actually do now? How do I get out of this hole? How do I run ads?" So I think Mm. the biggest thing is, you know, if this does happen to you and you're unsure what to do, reach out to someone that can help you. And I think the big thing I speak spoke about say in a post I did actually on my profile is, you know, one of the biggest things that I suppose has held me in really good stead. In, in my career in the fitness industry and now working you know, in sales is identifying that I don't need to know the answer to everything, but I need to know that I can ask questions and get the answers if I need them. Yeah, well, we we're kind of talking about that with Charlie um, today. So Brad and I have a mentor named Charlie Vella. So shout out to Charlie. Um, and I was saying how blessed we are. Like, um, I believe you were having a conversation with Jeremy Miner and his team today. Um, we met up with um, Matthew Ryder um, last month. And so I was lucky to go into the sales sniper's office. I was so blessed to talk to James Kant today. And we've got Charlie where we've got this like Avengers of people who can help us. Um, but that's just because of different, honestly, because of different programs we've done um, within our life where you can reach out for help when you're, when you're struggling, where, you know, I realized as I, as we got bigger 
you actually need more mentors or more people that can give you honest advice rather than just have like one person look over your, your business kind of thing. But definitely guys, until you're at, you know, 500 to 750,000, you can just have one mentor, but as you get bigger, there's different, each different mentor has different skill sets. So if you guys worked with me, you'd get really, really good at marketing and lead gen would be 99.9% .9 of your issues that would solve. But then a lot of my clients I send to you, Brad, after that, like we're talking to Reese today, I'm like, brother, you need to do three months with Brad on sales because you you are much better at sales than me and I'm much better at you at marketing. So every mentor you work with will have different specialties and things like that. Yeah, and I think I think this comes, you know, a lot of things you know, where, where, you know, we run an inner circle program that's got, you know, 700 people in there. And I think it's one thing a lot of people miss out on is when you are a part of these programs is reaching out to the people in the program and making connections. You know, mm. that's so valuable. And that's how we've made all of these connections with people we, you know, can rely, you know, speak out and reach out to if we need to, because we've been in programs and we've started conversations and, and made connections that I think more people need to spend a little bit of their time also building up their professional network. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And um, mate, we've got Oscar who um is about to hit one hundred and fifty active members. Really exciting for Oscar's business. So, Oscar has bought a Ubox, a UBX. Um, yeah, just recently, M massive, I suppose. Um, into his health and fitness, you know, enjoys boxing, um, but tradie by background, so not really, I suppose, much of a knowledge base of running a fitness business, if you like. Um, and, and came in and during the transition of the sale, we met a couple of times and again, coming down to really knowing his strengths and weaknesses, he, he asked us to help him with his marketing he, and he sort of lent on us a bit to help him get started in his journey as a business owner. And his yeah. business is transforming so quickly from where it was when he took over, really putting his stamp on it, but also asking questions in regards to, hey, I'm getting leads. What's the best sales process? What's the best system to use? What's the best follow-up? But more importantly, implementing it and taking action. Yeah, 100%. Really exciting with Oscar. Yeah, because I did my call with him um, because we're we're running his ads. Um, so his ads are going absolutely ballistic at the moment. So he's getting um, like what I'm having a look now, 20 leads, 35 leads, 30 leads. Um, and the thing that I was kind of like most impressed about with it all um, is that I was like in, in our calls, we have like this um, in the onboarding, we ask these questions. I'll, I'll bring it up just so everyone can go. It's like uh, how we get them to rate, like how good are you um, at sales and a couple of things on follow-up. So I asked him these questions and everyone answers yes. So I was like, how do you sell over the face-to-face -face or over the phone? Where do you collect money? Um, and I'm like, how do you rate your sales skills? Zero out of 10. I'm like, zero, you're super crappy. 10 out of 10, you'd be able to sign me up right now for like 1200 bucks. Um, then do they have time to call your leads twice per day? Do they have scripts? Have you previously gotten good results with paid ads? And he's like, yep, 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 yep. And I was like, oh, like we'll, we'll see. So it was his first time in fitness. And he is just absolutely dominated with his previous sales experience. It's absolutely mental. Yeah. And again, sales is, is a skill set, right? It, it It's adaptable across industry and, and it sets you up for so many different things in life. Yeah. Well, it transfers over, right? Um, and uh, and kind of in, incredible with, um, you know, taking over the business and just growing it so rapidly. Now, mate, we've got a, we've got a, a question from one of our amazing viewers uh, that we picked up from a check-in about managing fatigue levels. Now, Brad, you work like an absolute monster, bro. You go, you go hard in the paint, hey? So talks about how you manage your fatigue levels. Yeah, it's a really interesting one. And I watched a, a video the other day that I suppose really, really hit home for me um, in regards to like health. First of all, like you need to have your health in check. The biggest thing from, you know, and we think back, you know, medieval times, it's like, you know, the kings and the, the, the peasants, if you like. The kings yep. looked after themselves. They slept well. They slept in nice beds. They got good food. They exercised. And that's why they had you know, this, this status. And I think that's one thing we need to do is we look at, you know, managing fatigue. We need to manage our health. If we're yep. eating well, if we're exercising, if we're getting good sleep, drinking water, all these things, it's a, it's a massive asset and probably the foundation for fatigue. 
Yep. Yeah, and then 100%. I think from there, the next thing is, you know, managing, managing your calendar, managing your schedule, you know, and from that, actually looking at, are you working or are you actually working? Because mm. you can be at work for 10 hours a day and do not much. Yeah. You know, and this is where, you know, we have, we have, you know, one of our core values in, in the business that we work in is we care about results, not hours. So J- Jimmy never holds me account to, hey, you've only done three hours today, five hours today, six hours today, or hey, awesome job, bad, you work 12. It's what's the result? How much actual work are you doing? And I think it's a big thing with fatigue management is you can be in your gym all day and probably only work four hours. So yeah, you might need to actually sit down and, you know, as much of a pain in the ass as it is, and we've probably heard, you know, business coaches say it before, but, you know, document every 30 minute block of your day for a week and actually look what's being done. You know, people mm-hmm. say they have no time. The first thing I ask them to do is like jump on their phone and show me their screen time. <laughs> show me the screen time on your phone and tell me how busy you are. I know because where my phone is. A lot, of, a lot of the time they've got, you know, five or six hours screen time during the day and it's like yeah. 3 p.m. So, okay, mm. well, you haven't been that busy. Right? Yeah. So I think that, that, of, that efficiency, there. right? They yeah. end up being at work. We used to talk to this about our trainers a bit. So like, I always feel like I'm at work. I'm like, well, go join up at another gym and train there and like be more efficient. We'll teach them how to like get shit done. You know, like a, just be an animal. Exactly. And then, you know, the, the other side of that is you need to also put time in your calendar for yourself to recharge. Yeah. So like for, for me, um, I always say like I don't work Sundays. Jimmy and I always chat for an hour on a Sunday generally, <laughs> but I always have time in my calendar for my family. Like Sunday mornings, we go for a walk. During the day, we do Beach this. Walk during, every during week. week. I catch every week before every I week. chat time. <laughs> yeah. So I have things in my calendar to recharge me. I have my workouts in there. So making sure I've got time for myself to actually recharge on things that fill me up. Yeah is another one yeah. and that just helped me again do that consistently get into my schedule my routine and that's how i manage my fatigue but what are, what are you sort of did you know so you, you know you're you know up early you like to you know train there'll be you know cardio some running here and there what do you do um, i suppose at, you know being someone that you, you like to work sundays and things so how does it look for you yeah mate i um so i found like kind of my own flow so like I've really been really big in my life of like finding a certain mentor and like copying what they do and things like that. So um, there's been times where I get up and work in the morning for an hour and a half and then train. I think I've tested a lot of stuff Um, and I wouldn't say like I'm definitely um, definitely perfect, but um, for me, making sure I train in the morning so I can tick that off. Um, So then when we, you know, where I do work a bit late, say at the time of making this episode, it's like 6.54 p.m. um, for me in Sydney. So I can just chill out with my missus. Um, And then just all the health stuff. But I think the biggest thing is like knowing my flow. So I'm really good if I work Monday to Friday, kind of, you know, whatever time to whatever time. But if it starts to bridge over into the weekends where I have meetings and things like that, um, I start to not enjoy my weekends. So, you know, on the weekends, um, my wife and I get a massage, um, you know, every Saturday, obviously spend time with her. We like kayaking and relaxing. And then the, probably the biggest thing that recharges me is spending time with my family on a Sunday. So we have a thing that we call church with my cousin and his two daughters. Um, but overall fatigue, I find that if I'm really focused on our vision and I'm in a positive headspace, I don't get fatigued. So, you know, just like any business, if I if I focus on how many cancels that we've got and all the things that go wrong, I start to get fatigued. I start to get overwhelmed. Um, but if we're building new things and we're focused on the future, Um, is I wake up and some days you're like, some days I get out of bed and I'm like, just win today. And other days I get out of bed and I'm like, let's dominate the next three years. But it's always just focusing on that future and those little wins. Um, So I'm an emotional person as we all are. If I'm up and about and like focusing on all the good stuff. So it's like in the inner circle. So Cleo um, posts a a client result every day in the inner circle. And it's, I'm, I'm sure it motivates the people, but it's there for me. So I wake up and I see it. So I see, you know, Oscar hitting 150 members, Jason, who came from another program, who who's getting over a hundred members. Um, and that's kind of what motivates me a lot is that, that, that forward thinking. Um, and then all the basics, you know, sleeping well and you know, it's like, yeah. And I really like the fact like you've, you've tested different things, right? Because 
what you know what we see me do and what we see you do and what we see you know sally do all works for mm. us individually but it may not work for each other so you know when you're looking at managing your fatigue it's tr try some things out let's figure out what works mm. best for you i know that you know a couple of years ago i used to like when i was before i was married i used to work really late into the night now yep. i think because my, my no one would call me i'd be left alone to work i'd get heaps of work done now see mm. I'm, I'm married and have a daughter that time i want to spend with my family so things will change so just test and try it and see what works for you yeah yeah and i think if you're like ever feeling super fatigued overwhelmed burnt out you've got to reach out to someone and let them know um so you know you don't know what the issue is is it you know that you're getting over your business and that would be like lack of motivation lack of future thinking maybe you're legitimately not sleeping well it's like you know, um, I've been so blessed in my life where we've got, you know, Charlie. So if I'm really overwhelmed in business and not motivated because of metrics, he's there. Um, I've got, you know, very lucky to have James Kant um, within my life. So if it's actually health, not sleeping well, he whips up whatever he needs to do for that. Um, so it can be a multitude of different areas. It's really like you've got to be super in tune with your body and your emotions to manage fatigue. And I also think you know, on that, it's you know, having open communication with the people around you because yeah, being vulnerable. You know, well yeah but also like sometimes people can see things happening before you can see them happening yeah so you know, if you start to have a couple of off days at work you're late for a session or things are happening you know if people and you're open with the communication when you're like hey man i'm just really like fatigued can you pick up a couple of sessions for me here hey i'm fatigued i'm going to have the weekend off hey jimmy i want friday i'm a bit knackered i'm getting run down like i had covid the other week guys like rang Jimmy on Friday. I was like, Hey, I'm literally I cannot work Monday. I'm probably going to be feeling okay, but I just need to have a day to, to just recharge and reset. He's like, yeah, bro. Sweet. Because we know that if I don't have that day off and I just keep fighting through it lasts no, for an extra no. three or four days off the back end and I'm not working efficiently anyway. So it's like lose half a day no. or lose four days. So I was just yeah, I, the chat about it. And I think one of the tough things for fitness business owners is, one of the worst parts about having a small business, while I'd never have a goal of keeping things small and tight, is you have no backup. You know what I mean? Like there'll be a lot of fitness business owners watching and listening where it's just them. And like, firstly, I've been there and I feel for you. Like you have no backup, no processes in place um, where if you need to have a day off or a week off or a month off, you have no team to cover you. And, you know, if we talk about fatigue, that stresses the hell out of you. You know what I mean? So, and we we're talking about it previously in the episode where, you know, Brad absolutely loves the inner circle. He wants us to grow. Like we're together as a unit that if he went to, um, if he went to Europe, you'd start to get fatigued. You'd start to get overwhelmed because you see your, your company not moving towards its goals. So um, it can be a lot, lot to do around that as well, where it's just you and, you know, you are fatigued. So it's like grow up a fucking bigger business. Right. So you have a team so you can have some time off. And I remember the, one of the happiest times, like I used to hate morning sessions. Do you like morning sessions? Like 5 a.m. I used no. to hate it, man. I used to hate it. I hate it. Never, never, <laughs> anyway. I don't think I ever delivered a 5 a.m. No, so session unless we, I was covering a coach. Yeah, so I used to do 5 a.m. PT and stuff and then just, just resented it towards the end. It was just like, anyways. And then I got my morning sessions covered and that was one of the happiest moments that I've ever had. In the gym, you just look up and you just get, and you can actually have a morning routine, and then you can go and train and like have a lift at six a.m. at like a normal time and dominate your sales calls and stuff. I mean, it's an absolute game changer, absolute game changer. That one, yeah, definitely, definitely, and but definitely and something they, I think people are also aware of. Like coming into Christmas, like we're we're in November now, um, you know. So again, like there's some future planning that's going to happen if you want time in christmas and then you start mapping things out setting up schedules communicating out with members and staff like now's yeah. the time to be looking for those things and uh and mate just finally uh joey been absolutely dominating talk to us about the yeah, the sales. yeah joey the literally messaged numbers. me like just before we jumped on this on this um you know podcast joey reached out um, i just check in with him every couple of days um so i started doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching with joey about eight weeks ago now, 10 weeks ago now, um, in sales coaching. We did a month of sales coaching together. Um, and then his business partner, well, his boss essentially was like, hey, Joey, like you're really crushing sales. Like, what are you doing? Like I'm working with Brad. And then it came up that Peter, his boss, had been wanting to launch this semi-private PT in his business for 12 months. 
but yep. didn't know what to do. So we jumped on a call. I sold him. Doing nothing. <laughs> doing coaching. nothing will solve it. Yeah, so <laughs> doing, doing nothing was his solution. So we set out a plan. In six weeks, we were going to launch this program. So yep. we got to work. Within four weeks, we were essentially ready to rock and roll. Yeah. And um, all the systems in place, the text messaging cadence, follow-up cadence, everything was ready to go. We launched the marketing. I think we opened with uh, 30 people, um, mm. people in the first two weeks to get started. They're currently five weeks in. Um, they're at 50 members. Their capacity is 62. That's um, so and nuts. They've closed everyone at 599 up front, um, rolling into a 24-week agreement. Yeah. So, so a massive, um, I suppose, shout out to, to Peter and, and Joey, you know, they're an amazing one-on-one -on -one business. And, you know, in the last Launching. six weeks, essentially, since we launched the ads, um, you know, we've added 50 people to that business and essentially have a very, very healthy, profitable, um, you know, another uh, profit layer to their business. Yeah. Crazy. Hey, I've done that a lot in my life. You, know, you have a good idea. And for some reason you, you don't take action on it. And then it like, we did that. Um, so we ran a, a school holiday camp, like an AFL, a two day one. It was pretty sick. We made like 18 grand in two days. Anyways, we talked about that for like a year because my old business partner was like, a was really good at AFL. I guess probably good in terms of Sydney, good, not actual good, good, good. If like not WA good, <laughs> um, but we ran this camp and it just went absolutely ballistic. And then like, it's a real head scratching moment where you're like, yeah, I wish I did that two years ago. I really would have like raked in, you know, what eight school holiday programs there? <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's always it's always the the fear of the unknown. It's like okay, what do I have to do to actually get this up and running? Mm. And it's you know it's, it's funny like it's like what's the what's the cost of doing it is always one yeah. question. But on the flip side, it's like what's the cost of not doing it? And you know, mm. Peter and I laugh. It's like Pete, we did you did nothing for twelve months. Look what you've done in five weeks, and like think about what we've missed out on. In 20, mm. like the 12 months that you didn't do anything. And he just laughed, like, don't remind me where we're moving forward. But it's good that he's like, okay, I know that now that I've taken action, I want to make this the best program ever because the results they're seeing in the program is are amazing in regards to their clients. Absolutely amazing. Um, so they're yeah. also happy that they've gone from you know a one-on-one -on -one model and now duplicated it into a semi-private model, and clients are getting just as good a results, if not better. Mate, incredible. I'm pumped up for them. And guys, just finally, um, for those who have stayed along for the whole episode, just want to fill you in a couple of inner circle events that I'm pumped about. Um, so we've got planning your December, January, like marketing ideas. And we're actually going to be talking about keeping it like incredibly simple and not that crazy complex stuff we talked about 20 minutes ago with 48 different offers and changing dates. And that's steer, steer away from that. So if, uh, if you like to keep your life simple and absolutely dominate, you'll love that presentation. Then we got how to generate 15 leads a week using Facebook ads, ads a little bit like Oscar. Um, is Joey, Joey using ads? Like they are ads using ads, ads. cooking ads. And then how to grow your business by 30% in 2023. So that's from the book, Vern Harnish, um, where if you can grow your business by 30% every year, you're considered a gazelle, um, which is something I've always really focused on. So we've, I think, Brad, we're going to grow by 70%, but it gets harder as you get bigger. So you can kind of do it. The first four years in business, you should be growing by 30%. So we'll do it this year, Brad. We'll do it next year. And it's just um, a, it's might just get a, a coincidence that I've just been here for 12 months as well. I'm just going to say, <laughs> just so we're aware of this. <laughs> well, the year before that, we would have grown by like a bazillion percent. Because <laughs> you were first... around. <laughs> <laughs> and then how to collect $10,000 in 24 hours with a godfather. You You had the record for a bit. Yeah, was, it, was it 42k? It's been, it's been smashed now. Yeah. So we did 42 and a half thousand and some change um, with an email, no sales calls on, nice. on a boxing day. Great. So there's nothing better than I was sitting on the beach drinking some Coronas, um, seeing seeing my stripe just, just ding away. It's quite ballistic. nice. <laughs> quite and nice. Yeah. So Rick collected 56 and then he did another sneaky one. And I think he got another 20. It gets addictive. Guys, just remember. When you're collecting cash up front in your business, it doesn't actually make you more profitable. It makes your top line revenue and that monthly profits, but you've got to make sure you have the cash reserves for the next 12 months. So save it or use it very, very, very wisely. Don't go buying like Mustangs and, and stuff like that.
Um, and then, uh, and then the the one on December seventh. So planning for December and having time away. Now, mate, do you having time off over Chrissy or what? Are you work through? What's um, going on? I think I've got like th- I think I booked three days annual leave, which gives me like ten days off or something. Because um, you build it around the public holidays, hey? Be- yeah, just between Christmas and New Year. Um, yeah, for good me. Little break. Um, get, good, again, good little break, recharge. Um, this, my wife's birthday is Christmas Day, so it's absolutely chaos in my oh, house. Oh, how cool. Uh, it's expensive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice way to put it. <laughs> it's their 30th this year, so it's like my daughter's first birthday in December, Christmas, 30th birthday. So it's a busy, busy time for us. Just a couple of days off and then, you know, get set for the big trip in September. Yeah, that's it. How that's about it. you? Any time off over um, Christmas to me? No, nah, we're having we're having Chrissy here, um, so I'll probably be at home. So I don't, I, w- I would, I won't be working um, full time, but I think I'll just be around because I'll be at home. And it's like because um, you and I always say, "Oh, we're not working," and then literally three well, hours later, we're on a phone call speaking about something. <laughs> yeah, well, I still want to move to Dubai, right? So I meet lawyers again next week about moving to Dubai. I should stop I want, threatening. I want you to. How about I'm like good? I can well, like, because I want to come and drive nice cars. Yeah, so I like so I, I so I meet meet some lawyers again about moving to Dubai. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll see. So we want to go over to Dubai, um, and just like rent like an Airbnb for a month and see what it's like living there. So I think we're gonna do that in Jan. But I was talking, Jess and I were going for a walk today, and uh, the work hours are a bit different. So I'd start work five a.m. would be like lunchtime here, um. But I just really love working at the moment. I'm in a good flow. Like I live, like I'm looking at like the ocean right now from my house. Um, so it's like, I'm so happy where I'm at. It's like, I don't think, I don't think we'll go, but I really just want to go. Um, so it's, it's hard. You have so many options in life, but. Yeah. And as, as, as you know, like Liz and, I, Liz and I love the coast. So if you do go to Dubai, just leave your key somewhere. Um, and I can come and <laughs> you can come over. podcast in your office. Wait, I messaged, um, What's a fitness event? What's your boy Sean's name? What's Sean's name? A fitness um, and wellness expo. I miss him. We're back. You can have We're your little blow up bed. Blow yeah, up bed again. We're in. Well, we're you in. told me because you caught up with Brendo last week, right? And you're like, he's like, you got to go. Gotta caught go, up with gotta Brendo. Go. Caught up with Brendo again last week. Um, and there's some exciting things happening there. Um, but definitely yep. going to head back to the fitness and wellness expo and then, next year. And me duck out for the three hour lunch again. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Old, old man the fort. Big Brad's in the house. <laughs> So guys, we went to a fitness expo last year. It was, it was so much fun. It was really good, but I'm like a big time introvert. So I don't like meeting people. I don't know. Um, so introvert or is that just a dick? Introvert. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so I was like, so bad. I was like, I, what did I say? I was like, oh, I could duck down to the car. And yeah. I was just gone for like two and a half hours, went down to like a steak restaurant, had like a fat steak <laughs> and was just done. Remember you'd come home. And I'll just sleep on the couch and just like, it's just like yeah, just exactly. so mentally drained from talking to the, the the 50 people. But walking around was good fun. Meeting people, I love that. It was good fun. And again, it's a big thing. Like, it's like the, it was the first one back from COVID. Um, mm. I'm sure the guys have had lots of lessons and next year's going to be bigger and better. So really excited to head over and, and you know, be at that again and go from there. Have some fun. Have some long lunches. Long lunches. Have some long lunches. All right. Bye-bye, guys. See you guys.